Having said that, let's go into uh, the sermon today. Uh, the title of my sermon today is Staying Tuned. It is taken, um, the scripture portion is taken from the uh, RCL and uh, as I was praying and all, um, this is a message for me as well. Uh, personally, what God was revealing to me and the same things I would like to uh, share them with you also. Uh, this is from RCL, as I said. Uh, uh, so, it is not addressing because I am going to speak something, some, some words which may sound personal. But let me tell you, I am not addressing any one individual. Uh, this is generally I am talking. Okay? So, kindly take me in that. So, do you ever find yourself waking up in Sunday morning and wishing you did not have to go to church? And do you ever find yourself having a hard time staying awake, staying awake in the church? Uh, I have. You know, I have to breathe. Do you ever find yourself daydreaming during the message? or making mental to-do list while the pastor is preaching or maybe sitting uh, or some kind of thoughts like oh, no, no, I would have dealt this subject better than him you know, he should have focused on this point he should have said this without saying this point this message makes no sense this message doesn't make any logical sense what is he speaking? His grammar is wrong, or his pronunciation is wrong. I'm not saying I'm not saying like you know uh, we can uh, we can accept every wrong teaching. That's not what I meant to say. Are we going through these dissections, doing these dissections? Uh, are we getting distracted by them? And let me tell you, this is not just one person problem. I also sometimes I struggle with this with that I also I admit sometimes I do that okay do you ever find yourself dissecting as I said dissecting the sermon or the preacher in your head or not understanding anything he was saying do you ever find yourself wishing your pastor would be more something like you can fill the blank he should have been more you know use examples he should have used more contemporary language or ancient language, formal language, or he should have worn a suit <laughs> or a jacket, or he wore an appropriate dress or he did not wear appropriate uh, dress. Have you ever find yourself forgetting what the message was about before you get back to home? <laughs> I find myself in also. Sometimes it happened with me also. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever f suffered that? Usually what happens is when we find ourselves bored or distracted through the preaching of the word or we feel like the message are not impacting our lives, what do we feel? We tend to feel that it's because of the preacher. I'm not saying it is not. Sometimes definitely it is. Many a times it is true. If a preacher comes without preparation, the message would be boring. The message may not be ministering to people. If the preacher is not, uh, you know, sticking to at least a decent discipline of uh, homiletics, we call it, that's a technical term, which means preaching skills. And definitely it may uh, disturb people. It may not make much profit to the listeners, I admit. Many a times it is true that the preacher might have come with poor preparation, that's what makes us uh, feel bored. Some no preparation or with poor communication skills with or with unconventional attires, definitely sometimes they disturb people, I admit. But if you're not benefiting from the ministry of the word as it is publicly proclaimed in churches, Sometimes the fault may lie in our readiness to hear also. It, the, false, the fault may lie in our readiness to hear, to receive, 
and to respond to the word of God. Isn't it possible? Definitely many times from preacher side that will be there. What about the listener side? That's why I'm saying staying tuned. You know, we all use Wi-Fi. How many of you connected to church Wi-Fi? The Wi-Fi is working powerful, powerfully, but if your device is not connected to Wi-Fi, can we use the internet? No. We cannot simply say the Wi-Fi only is not working. It is equally important the Wi-Fi has to work the same way. The device has to be connected. When both are in synchronization, when both are in tuned, then only we will be able to use the services. Then only we will be able to browse. Similarly, God is constantly speaking to us. The God of the Bible is a unique God. God of the Bible is a God who speaks to people. What is the most repeated word you found in Old Testament? Hmm? God said, very good, thus says the Lord. That is the most repeated word you will find in Old Testament. Our God is the speaking God. <coughs> in other words, His Wi-Fi range is always on us. He is always trying to get connected to us. Of course, many a times, people have become deaf to hear. It is not because God is not speaking to them. It is because people are not tuned to God. When we are not tuned to God, no matter what God speaks, may not make any profit in our own lives. Linda, as she was leading, she spoke about the theme for this Sunday, which is honoring God. Singing to God is honoring God. Worshipping God is honoring God. You know, doing right things is honoring God. At the same time, hearing also, listening also is honoring God. So, on this Sunday, our theme is honoring God. So let us look into the word. Let us tune to the voice of God. Just overcoming all the distractions that we have both within us or in the preacher. Just look and look unto God and ask him, God, what do you want to communicate to me? May this be an attitude for us. May this be our practice every Sunday so that we may be able to hear from the Lord. Nancy D. Moses Wolgmoth, uh, who is uh, a preacher and uh, she is the wife of Thomas Nelson uh, Bible uh, Publishing Company's owner. And uh, she says, if your heart is hardened or it's uh, preoccupied with the things of the world, the most anointed preaching is not going to make a whole lot of impact on you if the condition of your heart isn't right. But if your heart is receptive, prepared, and responsive, you are going to find life, grace, and ministry from God to your heart every time the word of God is proclaimed. And she says, two people can listen the same message and some people can be benefited. They may receive the revelation of God and go and some people who are hard also, the message might not make any sense and they may leave but when we are with these receptive hearts looking unto the lord and we will definitely receive the word of god into our hearts which is transformative and jesus also spoke about this hearing this listening and hearing very much in his teachings and he gave parables also not just one more than one parable about hearing and one of the parable is so very common for all of us which is the parable of the sower and the soil, which is the right soil, which has received the word, brought forth much more fruit. The soil which did not receive the seed, and the so seed, what happened? Some brought forth fruit, uh, some brought forth the plants, but they could not bring the harvest. And some seeds were on the roadside, and devil has taken away, you know. So constantly, our screw tape is working in our lives. To take away the seed from our hearts. So it is so very important for us to be receptive and to keenly listen to the word of God. E.M. Bounds in his book, Powerful and Prayerful Pulpits, he says, We all know that without preparation the preacher cannot preach to profit. Without preparation the hearer also cannot 
hear prophet the sermon may fail because the preacher has failed in uh, prayerful and thoughtful preparation but the sermon may also fail because of lack of thorough preparation in the pew john stott many of you might have heard a great theologian uh, he says we must never therefore let our sundays become more routine engagements in that attitude of mind we shall uh, triple them away by uh, humdrum formality every sunday is meant to be a great day the lord's day and we should approach it expectantly in full awareness of this that's what john stott says hearing is so very important but many a times it is very difficult for us to hear because we hear so many other voices around us not just the voice of god we are not just having one wi-fi connection here now we know if you go to your house you will find 30 wi-fi connections 30 wi-fi signals you will find once upon a time there used to be only one you know, if you, once in few houses you will find one connection. But now, everywhere too many Wi-Fi connections are there. Which I, by which, what I wanted to say is, not just the Lord whispering into our ears or speaking into our ears. The devil, the screw tapes are speaking so loudly and screaming all around us. Because of which many a times we fail to hear. There are so many voices around us and but you have come here to the church which shows that you wanted to disconnect from all those other Wi-Fi and get connected to the Wi-Fi of God and to get to get separated and to leave all those other voices in the world and you you want to tune yourself to hear the word of God that shows a great interest in you and God would definitely appreciate we hear the voice of all these around us that's why we are not able to hear what are the voices some of the voices that we hear as we are listening to the sermon some of the voices that we hear as we are listening to sermon sitting in this church also is the voice of materialism why Pravin is not speaking about blessings why Pravin is not speaking about how I will get wealthy how I will get rich how I will get healthy how my problems will be solved and he is always talking about Jesus why he is not talking about getting rich materialism some places people will be going from one place to the other and when you ask them why do you want to go to church and they would say simply this answer we want to be blessed what do you mean by that we want to be blessed means we want to be health wise materialistic wise wealth wise we want to be sufficient that is what we define as blessedness if you don't go to church you will not be blessed what do you mean again health wise wealth wise we will not be sufficient so people go from place to place church to church listening to messages and they say oh this message is good that message is not good because he spoke so much about blessings so i got benefited from there i got the instantaneous um uh, instant uh, what we can call uh, um uh, instantaneous and but impermanent not per, which is not permanent uh, motivation for me to move forward if we get that we'll be happy and we say we are blessed in that uh, hearing that message sometimes when we don't get to hear that we feel god is not speaking to us sometimes we would not be uh, satisfied with the messages when there is no sensation in that we all are too, we all are so very concerned and we all like sensationalism. Some, we, all, we want to hear stories about uh, a lame man or a born blind man getting eye, getting vision. If those kind of stories are not there, the message won't be interesting. If I, unless there are so big testimonies saying like yesterday morning somebody gave me a, a million dollars check. If such kind of sensational things are not there we won't be interested otherwise unless we speak something controversial from where where did Cain got his wife such kind of messages we want uh, or we want to 
you know uh, find who are these nephilim how do they look and who is the spirit of eliza what is the spirit of eliza such kind of messages which create curiosity in us and which are sensational sometimes you know jesus uh, you know uh, uh, I remember I still remember one of my friends who in first year of theology uh, he wanted to preach a message and uh, there is a verse John 3:16 for God so loved the oh, sorry 3:7 and God did not send his son to say uh, condemn the world but to save the world okay John 3:16 somebody preached a message saying God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and the message was good and this fellow he want to create a sensation so he took john 317 and he said he did not take the entire verse he took the only first half of the verse he started preaching saying yeah, all preachers are preaching god sent his son but here look the scripture is saying it is said god did not send his son he did not read the rest of it <laughs> god did not send his son and made a preaching and said uh, sermon title is god did not send his son so curiosity creates creating curious curious creating curiosity curiosity is good but sensationalism do you do you uh, relate to what am i trying to say you know creating such sensation then only we'll be able to preach and if such sensational statements are not there then the word is not there and we some people will be waiting looking to hear such sensations only or sometimes it is by rationalism will be reasoning more than what is written in the scripture i am not against rationalism what we believe in our hearts must make sense to our mind but you know what even is even the rationalism has its limits there are a lot of things irrationalism cannot answer why a mother loves a child can any reason answer it can any can any biological science answer that why a father loves their ch children no no one can answer those questions how uh, you know earth is bringing forth the fruit can anyone answer no no matter what botany we study rationalism cannot answer sometimes as we are listening to messages so much of our rationalism it hinders us from listening sometimes our subjective subjectivist individualism please forgive me for using big words <laughs> these are the words you know uh, technically used uh, subjectivist individualism which means what is right for me is right uh, is right that's all it doesn't matter if there is an objective truth whatever i feel subjectively that is the truth so when we are listening to message we dissect the message completely by what we feel is truth what we feel is wrong we don't judge everything by the word by the word of god but we are by mere feeling that we have deep within our hearts it cannot be true sometimes when you are listening <laughs> we have our own experiences so our, the, i preached a message on perspective and language if you find time please i would like to ask you to check how we inter when we are listening a message how we deconstruct it and reconstruct it and make it to fit into our perspective everything that we take so many a times we have our subjective uh, opinions and with those we will be dissecting the message and some because of which we would not be able to hear the voice of god sometimes it is just because of moral relativism we say well, some the, what pravin is speaking may be true for him for me it is different it may be different for me there is no objective truth or moral or there is no objective truth uh, tro truth and morals are subjective and from person to person they may change from culture to culture from nation to nation from locality to locality they can change this is a perspective that we have in our mind because of which we would not be able to listen to the objective truth that the scripture is speaking and the god is speaking to us so because of many of there are many things but these are the most of the problems that educated church is suffering with this is these are the most of the problems that uh, the 21st century church is suffering because of these reasons we are not able to hear the voice of the lord these are so loud in our ears and the voice of the lord is not being heard to us and these made us deaf to the voice of 
God. Somebody said, if you speak a lies loudly and repeatedly, people will believe it is the truth. So the screw tape, <laughs> he is speaking so many of these so loudly, so repeatedly, because of which we are not able to recognize the voice of God also. Even when we will be hindered by all these things as we are listening from a preacher. And here in this word, the good news is this, Jesus comes and, and Jesus ministers with his whole self. You know, where you, uh, <clears throat> in which language, let me ask you this, in which language you would be able to your ex, you express your emotions perfectly and with satisfaction? We are all speaking English, right? Right? Can you, ex, ex, uh, you know, communicate all your feelings perfectly in a satisfactory manner in the language that you learned. <laughs> For me, I can never <laughs> be satisfied communicating it in English. There are people uh, who can communicate properly in English. But one thing is for sure, we would be able to communicate the deepest emotions and thoughts and feelings only in our mother tongue. We bring our mother tongue when we are deeply angry, very angry, or when we are deeply distressed, or we are so very much flabbergasted, a big word, <laughs> looking at the glory of God, overwhelmed, thinking about the goodness of God. Sometimes, you know, uh, when we are so overwhelmed with our emotions, then only our true language comes out or mother tongue comes out when we got hit, when we get hit i don't think ouch would satisfy me as calling amma would satisfy me <laughs> okay if i get hurt so similarly jesus he brought his mother tongue in certain places okay he by new testament it recorded some of the places where he used his mother tongue you know what his jesus mother tongue is Hebrew, Aramaic. Aramaic is the mother tongue of Jesus. Both of them look sound similar, but there is little bit uh, difference, like uh, Andhra Telugu, like Telangana Telugu kind of difference. Okay, Aramaic is the mother tongue of Jesus. So Jesus used several uh, several words in his mother tongue. So which what I would like to communicate to you is, while using his mother tongue, he is deeply involved as he is using these words and there are there are around, around seven or eight words but four of them are very important number one word is abba father it is just like i said when i get hurt i like to call amma not ouch okay so in such a way god is jesus is calling father as daddy dad papa in such a language he is using and he called abba that's one place. In other place, he used was when he was so very deeply emotionally moved as he was being crucified on the cross. And he said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani. This is an Aramic word Jesus used when he was going through such deep emotional trauma. And there is another place he used this Aramic language while he was raising a girl. And he said, Tabitha Kumi. Little girl raise he could not see the dead girl and he wanted to bring life into that girl so he said in his mother tongue with full of emotion full of himself and he raised the girl using these words and the la and the last very important word he used in aramic is ephata anyone knows what the ephata means ephata means you know be opened so in such a deep emotion, he comes to the deaf person and he says, be opened. And he is coming to us who have become so deaf with our own personal mora morality, who have become deaf by our own rationality, who have become uh, deaf by subjective individu individualism and moral relativism and materialism. So many other voices we are hearing. And in those deaf conditions, Jesus is coming to us and he is saying out of his whole emotion and he is crying into our hearts. That may be the better word I can say. He is crying into our our ears and say, Ephatha, be opened. 
you have become deaf. Now you have to listen to the voice of the Lord. And he's asking us to hear. And a couple of thoughts I would like to share and would like to close. What does it mean? What does hearing means? Does it mean what we are hearing? Uh, what we are doing just sitting in the chairs? You know, I still remember while I'm not breathing in the church, I can hear the voices of the preacher. You know, I, I could hear them, but I would not be able to process them properly. And a repeated word you'll find in the New Testament, which is so interesting to see. That is, he who has ears to hear, let them hear. Matthew chapter 11 verse 15. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. Isn't it a weird statement? Huh? It is actually. <laughs> it is a weird statement. Jesus is standing here. Bunch of people are listening to him. And he is saying, he who has ears. Are there any people who do not have ears? All people have ears. People, 5,000 people probably must be listening to Jesus. All those people have all these physical ears. We had 40 people here listening. We all have ears. He who has ears. But all, does, does all people who have ears can hear? No. All people who have ears cannot hear. There are people who, are, who must be sitting in Jesus' crowd who have ears, but they don't have the ability to hear. They may be deaf, but they have ears. Okay, And to them he said, let them hear. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. What he meant to say is, he who has, first is having ears, is opportunity to hear. There are so many people in this world who did not get the opportunity to hear the word of God. Think about so many Christians who are in the Middle East. And look at even North India, many of Look at our own church, our own scattered members, many of them did not have the opportunity to hear. Right? So, he is talking about people who have opportunity to hear. And next thing is, he who has ears to hear. That is, ability to hear. So, he who has opportunity to hear and have the ability to hear and let them hear. That's what Jesus is telling. So now let's take that words to ourselves. Do we have the opportunity to hear? Yes, we all have the freedom and opportunity we got. We could come to this place and we could worship the Lord, meditate on the word of God. We all got the opportunity to hear. Do we have the ability to hear? Yes, God has blessed us with all physical skills, now capacities. Now we are able to hear. We are not deaf. And even for the deaf people, we have languages now, we have machines now. So these things cannot be any excuse. So we have opportunity to hear. We have ability to hear. Now the question is, are we hearing? And one last thought I would like to bring to you and close. Uh, we need to introspect ourselves whether we are hearing or not. And another... Uh, in very important words I would like to give some interpretation to it that is from Luke chapter 11 verse 27 to 28 this is a very well known to scripture to many of you uh, and it happened he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you but he said more than that blessed are those who hear the word Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Here comes a lady was screaming and saying, Jesus, you are blessed. Your, your mother is blessed. She gave you birth. She nursed you. She is blessed. Jesus is saying, but blessed are those who hear the word and keep it. <laughs> Many a times I was interpreting the word just to uh, uh, what we call uh, refute the people who believe and who uh, add, who speak for the veneration of Mother Mary. It, just to refute them, I used to use this word, you guys are saying, because biologically Mother Mary gave birth to Jesus, you are calling her blessed. But look, here Jesus is saying, if G, uh, people who are hearing and doing are, 
are blessed than mother mary okay so i was just using it to fight this but in reality this verse is not about that at all this verse is entirely different luke is the one who is writing about it if you look at the context of luke it is quite interesting for him the kind of verses uh, he brings uh, just for to understand few verses i'll i'll quote and then uh, uh, give the interpretation for that mark chapter 1 verse 13 where he is talking about uh, mark, mark while he is talking about john the baptist he said the voice of the one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make his pastor this is the quotation from the old testament book of isaiah mark says till that and he stops but luke he adds some statements and he says and all the flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. From here we can see the sneak into the heart of Luke. That is, Mark was preaching the prophets, but Luke is bringing the application to entire world, not just to the Jews. If you read the genealogy of Matthew, the genealogy goes still Abraham, Jesus to Abraham, which is stopping with Israel, the nation of Israel itself, or at least to the Middle East. But Luke, when he writes his genealogy, he goes all the way back to Adam, through which he is bringing again. What is he trying to say? The blessedness is not just for the Israelites and only for the Jews. The blessedness is for the entire world. What is he doing is he is trying to bring this blessedness and wanted to communicate this message of blessedness to the wider range of people, to all the people of the world. So we can call... Uh, sorry, in one place, Luke 3 8, he also says, uh, while Jewish leaders and all uh, were talking to John the Baptist, uh, and they said, We are the children of Abraham. Then John says, God can raise children even from the stones. So, what is he saying is, You people are so proud about your biological connection to the covenant of the Lord, your biological connection to God. Or if you come into Gospels, you, you, many many people who speak up so strongly about the veneration of Mother Mary, they say she is blessed because of her biological connection with Jesus Christ. That's what they think. So here comes Luke and says, the blessedness is having nothing to do with the biological connections. Not because she gave birth, not because she is a Jew, not God can raise children even from the stones. You know, this blessedness is for entire humanity. It is not for the, just for the Jews or uh, Israelites only. And he wanted to say, this blessedness is for the entire world. He is a global evangelist. And through which he, what is he trying to say? How this blessedness is going to come? The blessedness is going to come not through a biological manner or nationality. The blessedness is going to come by hearing and obeying to the word of God. That is the connection, that is the root, that is the conduit for all the blessedness from God and to people. Blessedness power comes from God in that way, not through any biological thing. Blessedness and salvation does not come through biological relation or nationality, but through the obedience to the voice of God. And Many people who venerate Mary say it is because of biological. But if you look at the Luke is the only one who writes the Mary was blessed not just because biological connection but by her, by hearing her, we were hearing the voice of God and obeying at all, obeying it also. Luke gives the description of the narrative of G, uh, I mean Jesus' birth, and he says when the angel came, she, angel gave, delivered the word. She said, "Let it be according to the will of God." Number one is she obeyed the voice of God. Number two thing, nobody gives this detail except Luke. What he says, when the shepherds came and visited Jesus, when um, Jesus, um, you know, uh, lack of better, for lack of better language I'm using, when well, Jesus was missing in Jerusalem uh, and they met and he said, don't you know that I'm in my father's business? That time, when, he met, when they met Simon, all these people, you know what it, Luke says? Mary kept all these things in her heart. So Mary, she is the one who kept the word of God in her heart. And Mary is the one who received the word of God. And Mary is the one who did work according to the 
word of God. And that is why she is blessed. That is the message Luke was communicating. So this verse is not talking about blessedness of Mary by biological connection or relation, but because of hearing and keeping and doing the word of God. She kept all things in her heart and obeyed the voice of God. That's why she was blessed. She was blessed not just because of the biological connection but because of bigger connection. That is heeding the voice of God out of reverence. So we Gentiles who do not share the Jewish biological connection don't need to be disappointed but we can do the same thing what she did. That is hearing the word of God. Keeping the word of God in our hearts and then doing it. That is the same thing James was talking about in the scripture reading portion that we have read. James chapter 1 verse 22. Do not, mer do not, mer sorry, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. That is what James is reminding us. So in conclusion, what I would like to tell, this is what I can say. We cannot, sorry, in conclusion, uh, one point is we cannot do this by ourselves. We, have, we can do it only by the help of God. We need Jesus to come here and close to us and speak in his mother tongue to us. We cannot just hear the word of God and just do it. Jesus has to come to us and he, ne uh, and he needs to say, uh, speak to us in his mother tongue in which uh, his whole life to be imparted in us. So we need to be risen spiritually as Jesus says, Tabitha kumi. And we need to, sorry, uh, we, uh, regarding our hearing, Jesus come, has to come to us and say, Ephtha. Be open. He has to open our ears. He has to raise us from the dead. And we ought to be intimately related to Jesus. Just as Jesus called his father in Aramaic as Abba. When we are connected to him, calling him Abba. In that manner, we will be able to hear, keep and do the word of God. So we can only do it by our complete submission to the Lord. Just like Mary, the mother of Jesus did. So... May this be our prayer and a challenge that we take, that is to submit ourselves to the Lord so that we may be able to hear from the Lord and what we hear, we may be able to keep it in our hearts and do it just like his mother Mary has done. May the Lord bless you.